a lovely spot. A bit further out, a bit more in the trees, which is what I like. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So we've got Gail Dyer who basically specialises in, you call it transformational EFT. Correct. But you've been yes. doing the clinical hypnotherapy for at least 10 years and you've been doing counselling and all these other things as well. Yeah, so I'm, I've been a clinical hypnotherapist for about 16 years now and I actually started using tapping at the same time in my practice um, because I was shown it during our practical exams <laughs> for hypnosis and it really, really helped with my nerves. So I actually thought, wow, there's something in this. I need to explore it. So I just um, learnt it and started using it in my practice straight away and just got amazing results with it. So I haven't looked back since and I've been incorporating it in my hypnosis programs and just using it together. And it just goes really well with hypnosis in, in the practice and with clients. And, you know, to be able to give them a, a self-regulation tool is, is wonderful. Um, so then over the years, I've done all the trainings you can do in it. I've assisted on clinical trials and things like that. So then I decided to develop my own training and focus on training hypnotherapists um, to use the technique and integrate it into their practice. So I really, really love it. Yeah, yeah. And what actually got you into, well, looking into hypnotherapy in the first place? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was always interested in counselling and psychology, but sort of just when I was very young, finished year 12, just went out and worked. I grew up in the country and I moved to Melbourne and just worked and never sort of then ended up going back to uni. And then later on down the track, I was going through a marriage separation, et cetera, and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to do something that I'm really passionate about now. I'd worked many different types of jobs um, so I explored courses and came across the Academy of Hypnotic Science in Melbourne and did my training there and haven't looked back since. Loved it. Very cool. Uh, if anyone wants to ask questions or jump in, you're welcome to whenever you want. Yeah, so if you talk about, um, you call it transformational EFT. So what's kind of the difference? I think... Some, most of us will know a little bit about EFT or some of us would have done yeah. you know, some kind of training in it or experienced it. What, sure. Um, yeah. So yeah. sure, yeah, I, I basically have developed some um, strategies with it over the years and kind of really blended it in with hypnosis. So I created, I called it transformational EFT because just there's a little bit more to it than just standard EFT where you tap down the problem um, and you feel much better this just takes it a step further and like brings in self-hypnosis visualization bit of energy medicine mindfulness and just combines it all together to um, create a really nice process and different kind of techniques that you can use for different things so and yeah I, I teach all the basic EFT um strategies on my training as well as the transformational stuff that I've created myself I was just thinking um I shouldn't assume that people know what EFT is so uh -huh. <laughs> because there are actually people watching that are either starting out or our zooms do I've noticed a lot of people jump on that aren't hypnotherapists you know people just see it and they're starting to join up and just watch out of curiosity yeah. so it'd actually be cool to talk a little bit about what eft is and maybe you could even do a little demo on something yeah, absolutely we'd be happy to do one. that yeah that'd <laughs> be sure cool. so eft stands for emotional freedom techniques and it's basically a somatic stress reduction technique so it's where you tap on meridian points whilst focusing on or voicing a problem so you really get into and feel into the problem and allow it to show up, which is really important, whilst tapping on the points. So what that does is it sends a calming signal. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Send, that sends a calming signal to the brain as you're tapping so and talking or thinking about the problem um, that you're experiencing or any discomfort. It switches off the stress response and it calms the nervous system. So with it doing that, 
all of a sudden then we come out of the stress response, it switches off so we're not in our primal brain anymore and we can use our frontal lobe, it re-engages and we, we get that nice cognitive shift and we can think more rationally about things. So, you know, when you're working with a client tapping through all these problems or an emotion like anger or something, you just see this beautiful shift that they come up with themselves because of this physiological change that's taken place. And they can, you know, have more awarenesses and really, you know, tap into the resolution for the problem. And it just shifts that energy that's stuck in the body as well around the problem. It does a lot. It works on a lot of different levels. Awesome. And for, for the tapping, um, is there a little demo that we could do just to, to show people, especially anyone that hasn't experienced what you kind of mean by... Go yeah, into that space. I think it'd be really cool for sure. Sure. So if everyone's got, um, I can do either do a, a demo on one person, or I could. We can all tap together. So I'm happy to do it either way. <laughs> it's up to you guys. So put your hand up if you're happy to tap along with me. Yep. Cool. So what I'll get you to do is just drop down on a piece of paper. Just have a think about something that is bothering you at the moment or it might be a tension or pain in the body. So someone might have annoyed you. Just keep it pretty, you know, simple for today without opening too much of a can of worms. Um, something that's, you know, maybe a five or a six out of ten bothersome wise. One of your kids might have just left a mess at home and it's really frustrating for you or, you know, just anything that's that you know that you can feel in your body and it, it bothers you when you think about it. I just want you to name it and write it down and then rate it out of 10. If 10 was the worst and zero was it's not a problem at all. And note to where you, if you feel it in your body, so if it's an emotion like frustration or anger or something like that, do you feel it in your body? Or you might just have a niggle somewhere in your body, a sore shoulder or sore knee or something like that. Okay. Just rate it out of 10, whatever pops into your mind. How much of a problem is it? How much does it bother you? And then we'll tap through together and see if you experience a little shift. Would anyone like to share what their number is? You don't necessarily have to tell me what the issue is, but what your number is. Would anyone like to share? Five. Five. Great. Eight. Five. Eight. Eight. Wow. Seven. Six, five, yeah, awesome. It's amazing that, you know, once you start to feel into something and tune into it, it's actually quite often it can be higher than what you think it is um, because we tend to push problems away and ignore them and just, you know, um, try not to think about it, put it in the background kind of thing. So tapping is a process where we really do feel into it, tune into it, let it show up. So sometimes it could um, show itself a bit more when you allow it to, to come forth and be worked on. So that's pretty normal too. Okay, so I'll show you the points that we're going to tap through. And then what we'll do is we'll tap together and I'll just say some sentences and you can, uh, with your microphone on mute, you can voice your problem with, you know, following along with me and we'll see if we get a little shift, okay? So these are the points. We've got the karate chop point here. We've got the top of the head in the middle. We've got the eyebrow just at the end of the eyebrow there. You can just tap one side or both. It doesn't matter. We've got the side of the eye, under the eye, top of the lip, chin, collarbone there's a spot under the arm if it's not too awkward just in line with the chest 
the flat part of the wrist and on the inside of each nail bed, I just squeeze like that. It's a lot easier. Okay. The fingers are great because you can do those anywhere and no one knows what you're doing. So you can be quite subtle about it. For the um, for Lily, just a couple of people jumped on. Um, we we're just told to think of something and where you feel it in your body, give it a name, write that down out of one to ten, rate it, and then we're going to work on it. Um, she's going to work through with you. Yeah, so just think of something that's bothering you. Rate it out of 10. Just write it as a word. It might be frustration, annoyance. It might be a pain, a soreness in the body. And you can just write that down and rate it out of 10. And we're going to tap through the points while you're focusing on your problem. So try not to think about the points too much or whether you're going to remember them or not because I can send you a handout. That's not a problem. Um, and really tune into your, your issue so that you can experience a nice shift with it. Or even just, you know, notice whether you're starting to think differently about it. Okay. So everyone ready to tap? Awesome. So tap on. So if you all put yourself on mute and just follow along with me, I'll just use some generic words and you can replace, like I might use the word stress, you can replace that word with your issue that you're working on. It might be a person's name or it might be, as I said, a physical pain or a frustration or something. So just use your words. Okay. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. I just saw that in the chat box. Okay, thanks for that. All right, let's tap on the karate chop point. Now, this is where we create a setup statement to accept and acknowledge our problem. Okay, so just repeat after me and you can do it out loud because you're all on mute and you're doing this in private. So even though I have this problem, and insert your word there. I choose to honour and accept myself. Even though I have this issue, I choose to honour everything that I'm feeling. Even though I have this problem and I can feel it in my body, I choose to honour everything that I'm feeling and accept myself in every way. Good. Now go to the top of the head and really tune into your problem. You can look at the piece of paper where it's written down. Note where you feel it in your body. This problem, and just repeat it as we tap through the points. This issue, it really bothers me. This problem. I can feel it in my body. This issue. This stress. It's really bothering me. I wish I could let it go. This problem. So really let it show up, acknowledge it. Another round, top of the head. This problem. Think of how it's showing up in your body, how intense it is. This issue, this stress. Now take a nice deep breath right down into your belly. What if I could just let it go? What if it's out of my control? What if I could let it pass? This problem. This stress that I'm feeling. Good. This stress that I'm feeling, I can feel it in my body. 
Big breath. I choose to let it go now. Letting it go. Letting it go. Okay, let's check in. Just want you to check in with your issue. Notice if it's moved in your body, if it feel, the sensation feels a bit different. And just re-rate it. Just notice if it's dropped at all. Would anyone like to share if they've had a drop or a shift in some way? So my daughter started with a strong feeling that she's too scared to come on the camera. She's 12 for a fear of trotting her horse. And at the end, she said it feels, she's like, oh, it feels a lot less and she was feeling her tummy oh, where, where wow. it was before. So, and that's her first time she's untapping. Oh, awesome. Awesome. That's how quick it can work, especially for kids because they don't overthink it like we do. Um, and like you can, yeah, get really fast results with um, like 12 year olds, young teenagers and, and things like that. So specifically um, for phobias and fears and things like that. So it can shift really quickly. Did anyone else get a drop in intensity? Yes, I experienced it um, from eight to six. Wonderful. And that was just after two rounds. So just a few minutes. Imagine like the shifts you can get tapping for half an hour or 45 minutes or something with your client. Like you can get some amazing shifts happening. Linda, did you have, raise your hand? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a um, pain in my shoulder. Yeah. So actually, and when I was sat here before, I could feel it without moving. And now I, it's the pain subsided. I can now feel it when I move, but not necessarily aching when I'm sat still. So that's Awesome. Good. Well done. I think um, doing it with pain gives such validation and such, you know, it just mm. shifts so quickly. It's amazing. Well done. Well done. Mm. Anyone else? Yes, uh, I have a shift uh, down from five to three. That was awesome. a feeling of irritation about myself. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Olga. That's great. Yeah, and definitely, you know, those feelings we have towards ourselves can be worked on really effectively. So that's really powerful, isn't it? Wonderful. So would you like to do a few more rounds? to see if it can shift even more. Awesome. Let's do that. Tapping here. Even though I still have some of this problem, I choose to honour and accept myself. Even though I can still feel this issue, I choose to love and accept myself in every way. Top of the head. This remaining feeling. This remaining issue, I can feel it in my body. This remaining feeling and all that it means to me. This problem and how it makes me feel. Just thinking about it. Big breath. Right here, right now is all that matters. Right here, right now, I'm okay. This problem, this remaining feeling, what if I could let it go completely? This remaining pain, This remaining stress, this remaining irritation, this feeling, I choose to let it go now. Right here, right now, I can let it go.
letting it go. Letting it go. I give myself permission to let it go right now. Now, I just want you to, you can just squeeze the fingers, just close your eyes. And I just want you to breathe in something, someone, some place that you're grateful for, a blessing in your life. Breathe it into your heart space. Really feel into that gratitude. Blessing. Good. Elevating your emotion, feeling that. Gratitude bathe every cell of your body. Beautiful. Now imagine the outcome that you want with regards to that problem. You're free of it. Use your imagination and imagine that you're completely free of it now. Your life is just how you want it to be. You feel amazing. Imagine that outcome that you want. See it. Feel it. How does it feel to be free? Notice how you look. Notice how you carry yourself. Again, breathing in that gratitude for that shift, that freedom. Really breathing it in, lifting yourself up, elevating yourself. You've already achieved this freedom, this shift. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. Did anyone get a further shift? How's that pain, Linda? Yeah, it's reduced. Yeah, it's going. It's good. Excellent. Excellent. Well done. Mm. Anyone else? Anything you want to share at all? She Any said other things that popped up or? She said it's gone. It's the feeling that she had in her tummy and that she could see herself trotting without being scared. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. It's really powerful, as you know, as a um, hypnotherapist to, you know, visualise that, really feel into, the, into it already happening. Yeah. So that's a really, really small snippet. Kate, yeah. I've always had a bit of a problem with tapping. It's, um, sometimes it drives me mad because I, um, people go on and on and on with their language and... Um, yeah. And I find that frustrating. And then when I do it on my own, oh, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, and then there are issues of um, health issues that are generally long term. Like um, I just worked on the tightness that I get in my bronchus yeah. um, with cold weather. Yeah. And, um, and it's sort of part of asthma. And so long term issues take time but EFT people usually I and mean, please forgive me I'm, I don't mean this to be an insult or anything yeah always it comes across to me as if they believe that it's going to be magic and it's going to be finished yeah sure so sure. what's your take on on yeah. length of time and and long-standing physical issues sure good question um and you're right it, we do go on about how wonderful it is <laughs> because it is and it can get really, really fast results, okay? Mm -hmm. And other problems might take months, years to shift depending on what trauma, et cetera, is behind it. So I've actually um, had to deal with certain health issues as well, chronic fatigue. I had that for five years and tapping helped me come out of that properly. Um, and I've had chronic back pain, which I've used tapping for as well. So it really depends on the person. It depends on the issue and what's behind it. So because it's really important to look at all the different aspects behind the issue. Um, a pain, for as an example, might have 
a couple of different emotions attached to it. It might have trauma attached to it. So, yeah, it really does depend. Um, but what I can say is that with every session that I work with clients, we get a shift. We get a positive shift. So, but it's all a, a part of the bigger puzzle. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good. Good. Awesome. So not only are you working with the emotions with things, um, tapping actually has an amazing physiological effect. So even if you're just physically tapping on the points for no reason, you're calming your nervous system, switching off the stress response, so you're regulating your cortisol levels, and it actually upregulates 72 genes associated with health and well-being. So physiologically it's doing a lot alone. Um, other than, you know, when we focus on the issue at hand um, and, you know, really working with that as well. I have a question. Uh, so now we are tapping out um, negative emotions, yes. some of them, but can we tap in positive one and you response in? Yes, Absolutely, absolutely. Because tapping actually puts you into a state of hypnosis. It, it lowers your brainwave levels. Yeah. So once you've tapped out the negative, you can certainly tap in the positive. And that's all part of my transformational process that I teach with, you know, really getting into that side of it and learning how to use it in so many different ways. Yeah. And you can yeah. definitely program things in with tapping as much as yeah. you can release things out. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Gail, what are your um, thoughts on remote tapping? Yes, that's definitely, uh, definitely works. Um, obviously, with any remote work, it's about getting yourself out of the way, getting permission from whoever you're working on, whether that's energetically or physically, you've asked them. So, yeah, you can certainly do... Um, remote like surrogate is that what you're talking about yes yes but my I struggle with that as yes. in when I'm tapping I don't know if I should be I'm not sure if I should be tapping on how that affects me or how that affects them yeah so always start with you first yeah clear your stuff first and then perhaps you can work with how it affects them so if I'm working on someone's anxiety, would I, so I would do a couple of rounds on how it's affecting me once that comes down. Yeah. I, what sort of statement would I use to help them? It depends on what's around that anxiety, of course. You could just use the word anxiety, um, you yeah. know, even though you're experiencing this anxiety. You're still a great person and all of that. There's different should ways. I, should I name the person or say you are? Yeah, there's different ways you can do surrogate tapping. So you can either say you and name them or you can imagine that you're them. Oh, okay. So there's different ways. Yeah, you, you'd have to sort of go into that. But um, always work on yourself first. And what you'll find is that when you work on your own stuff, energetically that shifts onto them anyway and you get this beautiful quantum shift. Um, it's fascinating. Like the amount of clients that I've worked with that have issues with colleagues or children, other family members, and we just stick to working on their feelings about it, their feelings about their behaviour, et cetera, when they can work, bring that down in intensity and let it go, the other person's behaviour just changes. It's quite amazing. So, yeah, it's really, really interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions? So um, if you... How many sessions would you do for somebody that maybe, I mean, I know it depends on the level of anxiety, but what's your average sort of like session duration and how many sessions on average would you do with a client? Yeah, again, it just depends. So I don't typically do one offs these days. I'll do at least a three session pack with them. Um, and then other people I work for 12 months with. So it just depends on how many things they've got to work on and, and what their issues are, their background and 
all that kind of stuff. So really like you would anyway with your with your sessions working with people, just tune into them and get a feel for what you think they need. Yeah. And then do you do an in I mean, do you do an induction as well or do you do mirror what you did with us? Yeah, so I that's a really good question, Linda. Some both. So sometimes I'll just go straight from the tapping, get them to relax back and close their eyes and go straight into suggestions and things. Mm. Um, other times I'll go through a bit of an induction if I think they need further deepening or relaxation. So again, you'll just work with what they're presenting with and yeah, you just use I'm your hearing. intuition. Yeah. Yeah, and from your interview and your pre. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's good. Thank you. You're welcome. How did you find that as a process? And it's really, it can be really simple and it can be really in depth and complex as well. There's so many different ways you can use it and apply it. And that's the good thing about it is you can keep it really simple. You can literally just tap on the points without saying any of the words and just feel what you're feeling. Allow the experience to show up, tap the points, just be with yourself in that moment, tap it through and choose to let it go. Yeah, I always tell my clients to not overthink it because um, like you said, Kate, you can quite often get all caught up, caught up in what should I be saying, you know, <laughs> and then that stops people from doing it. So I just tell them, just feel and tap. Mm. If you're really stressed, just tap and breathe. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Uh, do you explain to your clients uh, how it works in your in their brain? So uh, some logical clients, uh, they <laughs> maybe not accept that tapping will affect some something. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so do you explain yes, the science yeah. under it? Because yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, like anchoring or whatever it is. Yeah. But depending on the client and their beliefs and their interests, yeah. I'll, I'll change how I talk about it according to them. If they're more logical and science-based, I'll talk about the science and okay. I'll give them, you know, handouts to explain the science. I'll be, you know, research papers, anything that they want I've got mm -hmm. that I can give them. Um, or if you've got someone that's a bit more spiritual, you can more talk about yeah. Energy, yeah, it's more, different, you know, yeah. energy and things like that and meridians and stuff. So, yeah, it depends who you're talking to. I've, I've talked to groups of doctors and things like that about tapping. And, yeah, you really just have to change what you're saying according to um, their understandings. And uh, where can I have um, the information of the... Uh, neuroscience or science about the brain, how it works uh, exactly. Uh, do you know some sites or yeah, uh, so, like some info? info yeah, so that? you can look up um, eftuniverse.com. Uh -huh. uh, there's a book written by Dr. Peter Stapleton, The Science Behind Tapping. Mm hmm um yeah there's lots there's lots online actually if you google yeah some, you know the science behind tapping you'll find different articles and things like that bond university has mm -hmm. done a lot of clinical trials bond university in queensland so yeah there's lots and lots out there reach out to me personally olga if you want some, some mm -hmm. stuff and i can get that to you no problem okay thank you i have been told um through a mutual friend that some of the trauma work that you do with tapping is pretty awesome yeah yeah, yeah. it's actually really yeah it's really well known for its effectiveness on ptsd um, if you look up the stress project.org um, that's the site where they use eft tapping for war veterans uh, and they've been doing that for quite a while so it's a really proven technique for ptsd yeah linda So can you just give us a bit of an overview on the course? Do you provide a training course? Yeah, sure. So yeah, it could starts... You, yeah, but just an overview would be yeah. great and yeah. how much depth and the duration yeah, sure. and all. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. So it starts on the 13th of May, goes for all day Friday, all day Saturday, and then the following Saturday as well. So it's three live 
um, training days and it covers everything EFT. So you'll learn all the evidence-based kind of techniques and protocols. You'll learn how to use it for weight loss, food cravings, pain, um, trauma. And we talk for a couple of weeks, like a fair bit about trauma and PTSD. You'll learn all the basics that you would learn anywhere for EFT. And then we obviously talk about the transformational process and how to incorporate with it with hypnosis. Um, so yeah, it's very in depth. We talk about the science um, and there's lots and lots of resources that I give clients, YouTube clips to watch, books to read, article, all the science articles and things like that. So um, yes, does that answer your question, Linda? Yeah. Yeah. And you get lots of practice on the training as well. So not only are you learning a great tool to use in your clinic, you'll actually come out better the other side because you've had a lot of shifts yourself. And as a, as a um, therapist, you'll have more confidence as well because tapping really helps with that. It's awesome to work online with clients and I think that's really important these days is to feel confident working online with clients. Um, so you can broaden your clientele as well <laughs> if you don't already work online and work globally. Um, Tapping is a great way to do that. For people who have already learnt tapping, just like done the basic course that you would do, um, is, is this something that like they're going to learn a lot more over and above? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, depending on what course they've done. So someone could speak to me about what they've done and I will honestly tell them whether they're going to learn more or not. But honestly, I'd say most of the time you would learn more with each training that you do. You always pick up golden nuggets. Um, I've done a couple of the same trainings a few times and I've always picked up something new at each one. So, and this one is different to all the other ones out there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they would learn lots more. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. I've got a question um, really quickly. I was just going to ask about, I work in a hospital as a physio. And I'm just thinking this would be really useful. Sorry about the yeah. background noise. I'll mute myself in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, I just wondered about, would, do you do training for hospital staff? Is this something that um, is used in Australia in the hospitals? Yeah, some people do. Um, like I've worked with doctors and nurses and all sorts of practitioners. Um, so it's simply about learning the technique and you can apply it anywhere. So really, really effective for pain. Marie, is that your name, Marie? Yeah. Um, there's been two or three clinical trial clinical trials run now for pain and I assisted on two of them and um, yeah, wonderful results. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite passionate about working with pain and injury with tapping, yeah. So, yeah, you're right. It's a brilliant tool. I'd love to be, you know, working around in different hospitals with it for sure. Uh, does EFT works for chronic pain? Chronic pain? Chronic pain, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Chronic pain was what you said, yeah? Long term, yeah, absolutely. That's what the clinical trials were for. They were for chronic pain, not acute um, pain. Oh, okay. Yeah, chronic pain is something that can be worked with because chronic pain shouldn't really be there. Um, if it's if it's been there for more than six months, there's usually an emotional aspect to it. So, yeah, EFT is really really effective for chronic pain. Mm, yeah, thank you. Um, how long in any one session would you spend on tapping? That can vary too, Kate. Sometimes I've um, tapped for a whole hour just talking with people and looking at different emotions. Other times we've talked for half an hour, done 20 minutes of tapping and a bit of hypnosis at the end or 15 minutes of tapping at the end. It just, it just depends on um, the session and the person and, you know, how much they need to talk things out, et cetera. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> 
so for you what kind of clients do you like working with what's your favorite like for me i love the hard ones and the trauma yeah awesome. i love the tr tricky ones what yeah. what do you like working with yeah, I love working with pain, as I said, pain and illness, um, because there's a lot behind that that can be uncovered. I love working with anxiety and I love working with weight loss. So there's been some amazing results uh, in clinical trials for food cravings. It really knocks food cravings on the head pretty quickly. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting as well. Yeah. So I just incorporate tapping sessions in with my hypnosis and create a weight loss program for people so yeah it's awesome i do notice um being marketed quite a bit in weight loss even in um i did a course with at the amen just doing that brain health science stuff and they they talk about using tappy for weight loss and for things like that as well who was that with justine at the amen <laughs> university so yeah, it's in the States and it's just all on, it's more for psychiatrists yeah. and stuff, but it's on okay. brain health and and I know um, they kind of went into the tapping as well for helping people with management of food, which of course affects the brain. Yeah. Uh, the more weight you carry, the smaller your brain is and, and scans, which is interesting. Wow. How's that? They actually could physically see the brain change size that wow. somebody got. And um, so... When you're looking into brain health, um, one of the first things they do is um, checking out diets, working on what's underneath the weight, whether it be trauma. Mm. Um, and and they they talk about like the MDR, they talk about tapping and, and ways to hypnotherapy, three ways to kind of process um, all of the underlying stuff to get you on track. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, they did some brain scans at Bond University for the clinical trials for food cravings and they scanned the brain whilst showing people pictures of food in the machine and saw the how the brain was firing off. And then they did a four-week um, tapping program and put them back into the machines. And, yeah, I've got pictures that I show my students and give them copies of of um, the before and after shots of the brain, before tapping and after. And the after shots, there's no firing of the neurons in the brain for any desire for that food. So it's quite amazing. And they did two-year follow-ups and um, the results lasted that long to the point of where people were saying, what food craving? Like, did I? <laughs> so, yeah, really effective. Linda? So do you use tapping as part of your toolbox? So if somebody was to book in and come and see you, would they specifically be coming for the tapping or during your um, conversation with them? Would you think, oh, I can add this into mm. my... Yeah, so both. So the answer is both. Some people do come just for tapping because they've tried it in the past and they want to explore it a bit more. Um, and a lot of people have never heard of it. So I'll explain Fine. it gently, introduce it gently and tap away and they'll feel a shift and usually they're sold on it once they can feel a shift. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And if my went... smoker clients, so a lot of my smoker clients have never heard of it before um, and it's brilliant for smokers to interrupt that craving and work with the urges and things after, after the session. Okay, and what about menopausal women or perimenopausal women with flashes and yeah. night sweats? Yeah, it can be used for all of that. I remember I was working with a lady for weight loss once and she came back to me and said, oh, I actually used it for my hot flushes and it works. So I'm like, great, that's good. <laughs> so oh. she was using it to manage those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Annette, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, hi, Gail. Hi. Yeah, awesome awesome to um, listen to you. I did a training with Nick and Jess Autumner. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, and I used it for quite a bit. And then, I've, you know, how you drop things off and haven't used it for a long time. But I did use it with um, trauma yep. three years ago. And I have to say, it's huge. It, made, it was that difference between getting stuff under control. So, yeah. No. Awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a, and hearing you today, it's just a reminder to, yeah, pick yeah. pick it up out of the toolbox again. 
Yes. Yeah, it's a great yeah. tool to have in the toolbox, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy. You can do it anywhere, driving the car, in the shower, you know, at a board meeting, just wherever you can use it when you need to. So that's the good thing about it. Yeah, so thank you for tonight. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the hot flushes, when would you do the tapping? Is it like when you feel them coming on or yeah. Yeah. as they're doing their thing? Yeah, basically when you feel it coming on is when you'd usually use the tapping. I mean, you can tap any time, but um, it's really effective when you use it in the moment and you're feeling the symptoms of something and you start tapping. So, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Justine, I haven't been looking at the chat box, so no. um, I'm not yeah, sure. I was, I was um, there, there's people just asking, Marie, um, you can message her personally on uh, Messenger, or I can hook you guys up yeah. as well, just to look into that research as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think yeah. having a tool that regulates the nervous system or brings us back to that safe space. Yeah. It's pretty powerful. And I imagine um, with, with hot flushes, we know that, you know, with hypnosis, we can make a massive change. And I think breaking that state and starting to tap and then regulating the nervous system mm. is going to cause a shift, isn't it? Absolutely. Because yeah, when you start to feel it coming on, I don't get them yet, but I get it from other things. <laughs> like if I had whiskey, I get a hot flush real quick, you know. But you know what I mean? You know it's starting to come, and then I suppose getting in there and, and actively um, do, doing that and, and calming the nervous system down and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. You know, if you look how, how it would work, yeah. So... Um, talking about hot flushes I mean it's not always appropriate to be doing this in the middle of a meeting and a lot of people get when they're stressed in meetings for example so what um where would you do it discreetly if on your fingers yeah on your tips yeah yeah okay. you can just squeeze your wrist if you want you yep. can tap the fingers with one hand if you've only got one hand available or you can use the other hand and mm. and squeeze so yeah, for sure. You can just rub here as well. Mm. You don't always have to tap it. You can just gently rub it if you want to be less obvious. <laughs> Good questions. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Pleasure. Lily. Hi. Um, I'm just quite curious about the history of it. I apologise if I missed that at the beginning, but just how this was realised, developed, and where it came from? Like, yeah, sure. The psychotherapist um, Gary Craig, have you heard of him? No. He no. developed EFT, which came from TFT. Roger Callahan was the creator of TFT, um, but TFT was a bit more complex. They had different sequences for different emotions, and Gary Craig discovered you know, you could just use this one sequence for everything. So it made it a lot simpler. And he actually cured a lady of her water phobia in one session. So that was a big seller. And, um, yeah, it just developed from there. And then the war veteran thing started off pretty early on the piece, in the piece as well. Um, yeah. So, so it goes around the right way. Around 1940s or something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what year it was mm. first. He's an old fella now. Okay. Yeah. 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 Best, best it must be in his 80s, eh? Now? Yeah, probably. Yeah. He's in his 80s. For sure. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Really good. Uh -huh. Thank you. Pleasure. So, I'd say the one thing I like about him and, and EFT is that with so many protocols, people try, try to tighten them up. They don't let you change them. And they like to have ownership over them. But he's he's actually said to people, hey, go out and make it your own. Yeah. Um, and 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 I liked I liked that when I was um because I did his training, I liked that he he was actually encouraging people to, he was like, This is where I'm at. Go and play, children. <laughs> And make it better and create it. And also, if you want to do what you do, make it better to share it. Um, exactly. Of course, yeah. is what you've done. You've taken that and then got in all the knowledge that you have and created something that's even more powerful. And so yeah. it's quite cool that he, um, 
that that he he had that kind. Well, that's what I picked up anyway. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You're right. No. Was like take this and create more. Yeah, for sure. And it is a tool that you can do that with. You know, you can make it your own because everyone develops their own style of working with people. So um, it does make you a lot more intuitive as a therapist too, I think, because you're tapping with your clients and you're putting, so therefore you're going into hypnosis yourself with them and, and communicating with them energetically and subconsciously. So it does make you a lot more intuitive as well, I've found. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, the order of tapping, does it uh, affect the outcomes of the tapping? The order and the you order. Can tap on any, yeah, you can tap on any of the points in any order. So mm. that's, yeah, yeah. No, the, yeah, you can just, whatever works for the situation you're in, that's fine. Yeah. Mm, thanks. Yeah, no problem. And the cool thing you said is in, in your training, you go into the nitty gritty, the hows and the whys, eh? Yeah, we talk about all the different setup statements you can use, different ways of using tapping. I, As I said, I do teach the Gary Craig stuff so that you get that ground level EFT tapping. I like to honour that. And then we look at different ways you can use it. Um, yeah, so we use the movie technique for trauma, et cetera, that, that Gary Craig does and all of that. So, yeah, and then we play with all the different ways you can use it as a hypnotherapist. So, yeah. And um, for the fingers, is it each side of the finger? Or yeah, the by the side, yeah. Yeah, right. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. By the side of the nail bed. That's quite cool. So Kate, Kate does acupuncture. And when you um, listen to kind of, it, it is around the origins were kind of based in, in those techniques coming together, eh? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's a bit like yeah acupuncture kinesiology that works with meridians and and mm -hmm. things like uh, qigong. You know, a lot of these things all tie in together. So, which is nice. Mm -hmm. That's where you can bring in you know what a bit of what you do into the tapping. Yeah. Yes, so I'm excited to be running another training in a couple of weeks. So if anyone's interested in jumping on, uh, let me know and I'll give you a discount code for $100 off. So, yeah, just let me know. Reach out if you have any more questions. Um, I'd love to talk to you. Cool. And I can, um, I'll share that. I'll send an email out um, about your training. Thank you very much. Days. But you're on, I know you're on Messenger, so people can just hook up with you and yeah, get on sure. Messenger or find you on your website. I know when I was looking for your website today, it was easy. I just put your name in and it was the first thing that popped up. Oh, okay. <laughs> you didn't have to go searching, which is always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think I even put good. transformational tapping into it and it came up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Good to know. <laughs> but SEO is doing its job. Yeah, I haven't actually done much on my website, so it needs a lot of work, but Facebook's where I usually pop everything up. Um, yeah, yeah. So connect with me on Facebook and follow along. I, I put tapping videos up on my page um, and, yeah, lots of other bits and pieces as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Thank you. Um, Thank you, everyone. Yeah, and like I said, for people that are watching too, because what happens is quite a lot of people can't make it to these calls, but it goes on, like like you saw, it goes on the platform and then those are always available. And people do um, do contact you. So, you know, you might get people contact, you know, months on from watching it just when people kind of get around to getting on there and yeah, exactly. doing their thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I also run a private Facebook group that has all my past students in. So whoever does this course hop, hops into there and has ongoing mentoring. So this training will be the last probably one that gets the free mentoring ongoing and then it will probably be a paid thing that uh, is ongoing into the future. So, yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Has anyone else got any questions? Um, yes, uh, the last question probably. <laughs> um, uh, what is the name of the Facebook uh, for tapping? Yeah, my Facebook page is Time to Thrive. So time if you look to at thrive. Time to okay. Thrive, you'll, you'll see me come up. Okay. Facebook's Thank all you. recently, which is a bit, a bit confusing. <laughs>
Okay, thanks. Just ask Justine if you can't find me. <laughs> yeah, I can help you guys out. Oh, I didn't have a mute then when my daughter was whispering in the corner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Very cool. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, it's a miracle that she came in here and sat down and actually did it. Yeah, that's great. I never, like happened, never happened. So awesome. Yeah, that's that's a bit ra that's a bit random. She'll do things. She'll work with some people on things. So she's I've got a friend Jenny that she'll work with, but for her to actually come in and sit down and do something, <laughs> fantastic. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit interesting. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you. I'm just going to press stop. Pleasure. Okay.